All right, guys, so we're gonna do an actual how-to video on how simple it is to get this motor converted without any cutting or welding. Um, pretty straightforward design. So we're doing also a couple more upgrades to this bike. So we chose a JSV exhaust from overseas with a silencer. So we're gonna test this thing out and see how it is. Let's not forget the electron carburetor. So we got the carburetor installed already. We're gonna give this thing full review. So uh, stay tuned guys. So we have the cradle laid out right here. We've got our motor mount bolts. So we're gonna basically bolt our cradle to this frame, which is gonna convert these motor mounts to line up with the Sierra 500. So we're gonna start by just feeding it in. So go ahead and feed it in RJ. Yep, just like that. So the next step's gonna be, you're just gonna put two bolts in the front. And I apologize for all the background noise. We are uh, running our mowing machines today. He's got that finger tight. Now the next step, he's gonna stick the bolt through here, the shorty bolt, this one here. So that's gonna get picked up. We will have to pick the motor up slightly, which I will do. All right, so he's gonna thread those in till they're just before being bottomed out. We're not gonna fully tighten anything right now until everything's in, so that's good right there. See, left a little bit of a gap here. Cool. Now this allows everything to still still be loose. We do have the pivot bolt already through with the spacers that were supplied, and that's not tight either. So everything is loose at this point. So let's go around to the other side. Let's get the other cradle installed. You guys are gonna get your fill of uh, CNC noises in the background. So I'm gonna pick this up again, if I can. Here we go. Yep, so you got her slid in there. Just picked it up about an eighth inch. Same deal, RJ, I'd get that bolt in on the bottom there. Pick up a little bit, there you go. And I'd get those two started with the uh, T-handle on the front. You can see the holes are already kind of lined up. So this one's a little tight here, just because of this. So I'm gonna put this one in by hand. I'm gonna grab a 10 mil that has a smaller head on it when we go to torque that. So again, these are just bottomed out. They're not fully tight yet. Put that in there like that. So you can see our holes are already starting to line up on the engine case. So I can see straight through there. Then this one here is starting to line up. Just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this nut under here. Hold the head of that, RJ. Cool. So we don't run any spacers because the offset is actually built into this bracket. So this is gonna rest directly against the engine cases. So let's put the nut on the other side if you wanna just hold that right there. This is a nice flange nut with the uh, nylon lock on it. It's all stainless. Just gonna go until it bottoms out on the nylon right there and still leaves a gap. So I'm gonna take the long bolt. He's gonna pick the motor up a little bit. Pick up again, just jiggle it. There it is. Okay, same deal. Pick up and jiggle. He's doing that just so he's not touching the water pump cover here. Okay, hold on. So he's gonna spin this in gently. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure here. We have everything pretty tight tolerance. I did not want this thing flopping around. So it's not actually threading right now, but it is allowing it to uh, slide in all the way just by spinning the bolt and working it slow. This is the point where everything starts to tighten up because you've got all your bolts in. So there's that. And this nut is going right on here. You can see how tight it is, tight tolerance to that. Try to keep as much material on there as we could. There's gonna be just enough so that nylon does catch the threads. Cool. Time for the head stay. That. 
throw one bolt in for now. Got your lock washer and your nut. Well, when you install these, you always want to check for a gap on each side. I'm not a big fan of actually shrinking these frames all the way in and, and crushing against it. So these frames do vary a little bit on the top from what we've seen, just doing like five or six of them. Um, but definitely pay attention to the gap there. If you need to, you can add a washer in or a shim, but we're trying real hard to, to make these so they're extremely easy to put on. So again, these aren't torqued yet, they're just snug for now. All right, guys, so the next step after getting all the bolts in, nothing's fully torqued yet. The first thing we're gonna tighten is actually the pivot bolt. We're gonna get the chain and the sprocket. Everything's gonna be like perfectly aligned back here. And we're gonna work our way around and go back to the head stay. Okay, so there's that, We're starting with the pivot bolt. Next thing's gonna be torquing these bottom mounts. Go ahead, I'm gonna change this. Okay, go ahead and tighten it. We're gonna snug everything up now and then we're gonna go back through and fully torque everything once they're all tight again. So there's that. Start with the bottom one. So right up there, that's the long bolt that goes through. So he's got that bottomed out. Now we're gonna go to the front one, which is there. Okay, so that's bottomed out. And again, we're gonna go back through after and hand torque everything. So grab your 10 mil RJ, tighten those top ones here. So everything's nice and tight there and go around and do the other side. You guys can see this pedal is close. There is a good gap there though. So it's also a little bit high. So this did change a little bit. So we're gonna make some adjustments to this after and just bring it down to about there and just get it about where you want it. So we're gonna go ahead and torque the head stay. Cool. All right guys, so a little close up footage here. The reason this isn't solid billet, we wanted to allow a little bit of flex in this mount just to uh, not make it too rigid on the top. However, on the bottom, we wanted this as rigid as possible. Um, you can see we don't have any spacers, so all the spacing's built right into the mount, which is real nice. So you're not fumbling around with spacers. So that's completely pulled in. That's tight there, got the nuts there. 
Just double checking everything. You can see there is a gap right here. I'll show you guys a close up here. Sorry for the shaky footage. All right, on to everything else. Now, when you buy this kit, we're gonna be swapping you out basically to a different radiator that's been modified to work with this bike. So we did have a relocator bracket that takes this hole, puts it up here. There's already a weld nut installed on there. So that's gonna bolt the radiator from here to here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on to that shortly. Um, but before that, you're gonna wanna get, get that back in. And this is the original from this bike. Uh, we just wired it up to that and it works great. Just enough clearance. Throwing oh, the spark plug caps on, this is just gonna spin back around, line up right there. See, we've got clearance on the head, clearance on the frame. Very, very tight, but allows you to still get this off. If you wanna pull the jug off, you just pull the back studs out. The whole thing comes right out. You're not pulling the whole motor out. So this is the radiator. Again, this bike's already been together, but we're just doing a how-to video. So there's a little bit of dirt on it already. So basically we took this piece here, welded it on the radiator. We capped this off already for you. Got our relocator bracket installed. Got our uh, machine bushings slash spacers that are gonna go in there and some new mounting hardware. Let's go ahead on the other side. Grab that radiator, grab the hardware. He's gonna take this bottom hose right here and slide that through. How about eight mil on a T handle? There's one right there actually. As you can see about where I'm sliding that through right there, there's just enough clearance to make that happen. Well, before you tighten those bolts, let's go ahead and get our hose in so we're not fighting that after. There, so just push straight down. Perfect. Cool. Now put the bolts in. So you can see how it's a lot easier just to get that hose on first so you're not fighting it later. Go ahead and put your top one in. First thing before you get carried away, you got your hose poking through, slide the clamp on so you're not fighting that later. So it's probably gonna drip. Go ahead and slide this in like this. Goes in real easy. Leave the clamp loose still. We're gonna hook this top hose up after, so I'm just gonna move that out of the way for now.
All right, so there's that. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna tighten this hose up now. It's right under here. Just barely get to it. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so we got these aftermarket hoses. We also include these fillet fin coolers that go on the on the hose. That's how it looks when it's not installed. So we cut the hose, basically extended it to reach up to here, and now we're gonna install it. Slide it onto the head. That slid on. And again, you wanna have all your hose clamps ready. You don't wanna be fighting those after. So that's on, clears nice. Now we're gonna move off to the other side. So, I'll get this one on, just like that. I think I want the other way. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get the clamps tightened down. I already had them installed on here already so they wouldn't fall off. So we'll loosen them back up, slide them up. Push down on the hose, make sure it's all the way, which it is. Okay, let's do the next one. I like to put everything so you can get to it easily. That's why this one here is facing forward. This one's facing out. Everything's kind of easy to get to because let's face it, you're going to probably get a drip after you put these together and you will be retorquing stuff. Another upgrade on this bike, got the decomp head. Forget the guy's name, but I'll uh, I'll put a link up to him. Um, he ended up sending sending this to me. We're gonna do some trading. He wanted a set of these uh, pillow cradle mounts, so gotta love that. So excited to try that out. Good. Okay, guys. I don't know what Honda was doing with all these uh, washers and spacers they got going, but honestly, it's not a bad idea because it's pretty much a spring washer. Once this is torqued properly, you're not gonna ever have these loosen out from vibration. So here's our billet flange that comes with the kit. You know, this is designed to accept the Honda style petcock with the O-ring. So we've already got the O-ring group cut. This is basically gonna take your O-rings off your fuel pump that you took off this bike. Using the gas tank that was originally for a fuel pump, they're converting it over for gravity fed. So I already installed the O-rings on there. I got the grooves lined up, got the O-ring on. There's a little bit of grease on it. So we're gonna go ahead and slide it in here. Now you wanna watch your direction of this. So you're gonna want this going in line with the tank. So that goes in super easy. Got it seated. We're gonna take all of the washers that they supplied with the original fuel pump. So you can see how I'm putting that on there. It's easy to screw up, but you want the spring washer to be sitting underneath the collar like that. And actually putting force towards the flange keeps it from loosening up.
these are the original OEM nuts. Those are going back on. I recommend that with blue Loctite. It is a CR500, we know how these things vibrate. But for the video, I'm just gonna throw these on right now. We'll go back and do it later. All right guys, so tank's obviously gonna sit like this on the bike. So we're gonna install our pet cock so it's facing outwards. We already got the O-ring on there. Make sure there's no dirt or grit on there. So that's the direction I want. Again, blue Loctite on everything. But for the video, we're gonna do that later. Okay. Go back after, put Loctite on everything. So this is gonna end up going on the bike just like that. Factory mounts, factory strap, everything's gonna look like OEM. We're gonna run the fuel line down in the carburetor. Cool. cool, so that's tight. So pull these wires out of here. I'm not going to give you guys a full rundown on electrical because you're basically taking your CR500 electrical, you're putting it back onto this bike, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, I like the mount CDI box up here. It's it's a nice tidy spot. It actually fits on the side of the gas tank, which I can show you guys that after. So now the tank just goes on just like this. You can see all the clearance that's in here. You can still get your spark plug out. You've got clearance for your throttle cable. And like I said, the fuel line is going to run straight down to the carburetor. Set. This is the fuel line. So we put an on-off valve in the center. It's gonna flip onto the petcock there. It's gonna go through this supplied holder and it's gonna go right to the carburetor. It kind of keeps everything from bouncing around. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. We're gonna post another video, hopefully in a couple hours, possibly later today. We'll see. We're gonna get this thing started up. So stay tuned for the next video. This exhaust is looking awesome. We're just gonna make a bracket similar to that. He didn't have a second mount on here, so we're gonna probably shorten this up, bring it over a little bit and make a bracket for that. But this pipe fits really nice. A lot more clearance on here than the FMF. It's sticking out a little farther, so it's gonna be closer to the tire, but it is what it is. Kicker did fit nicer, more clearance here. So let's see what happens.